Well, here we go. What's going on with this pot? Well, I've gotten a lot of requests to explain about French press. What is a French press? And I know a lot of you already know that, uh, so this video may not be for you. But it's been part of my ritual for going on two years now to use a French press. Now, I'm not a big coffee drinker. I drink maybe five cups a week. I have no cravings or desires beyond that. I'm certainly not addicted. Back when I was in the Marine Corps, and we would be up two, three, four days in a row, everybody around me drank coffee. And I tried the coffee, but the thing is, the coffee was disgusting. I, it was so nasty, I just didn't want to drink it. So I'd pop a couple no-dos. You know, I understood the desire for it, but you know, it's like, why drink swill? And so over the course of my life, I would drink coffee once in a while, and sometimes it would be really good, and sometimes it would be awful. And I never really understood that. And eventually, I had a really good cup of coffee in this coffee shop. Not Starbucks, by the way. I'm not a fan of Starbucks. All right, let me take a break here, and let's look at this. See how that's boiling? More of a simmering. Simmering is the temperature that you want. So we'll turn that down. So here I had this really good cup of coffee. And uh, I wanted to have that again, but I didn't know how to go about it. So I'll cut a lot of this out, but I've tried different uh, cappuccino machines and various things to do. And I just find myself on this roller coaster of that was really good, that was disappointing. Now, fast forward, I go to Ecuador, I'm there for three years, and I got all the time in the world, and you can source some excellent coffee there. Now, unfortunately, most of the good coffee in Ecuador is actually shipped overseas, and so the stuff behind is usually not so good. But there's some boutique places like Nucatella, for example who do their own coffee and it's it's top quality it's very high grade coffee uh, some of the best i've ever had and so every day about five days a week i would experiment with coffee with water temperature with a kind of coffee beans and if you recall during those years there in ecuador i was making Oh, about every three or four months runs to Colombia to my favorite place in the world in the coffee region and so I had this kind of in the background goal in my life to really understand why some coffee was good and some I couldn't stand and and through the course of it all never being addicted to it which I'm very grateful for now my ultimate method has come down to something actually very ancient and simplistic and this is you know this is what i get asked about right here i've got myself a very cheap french press now where you have plastic here on most that you're going to see you'll see stainless steel this is glass or plastic, I'm not sure. And you'll get glass or Lexan plastic. This, granted, is a cheap one. It's from Chinese version. But they're so simple. All you really have is a fine filter, a fine screen, a seal, and a plunger. That's it. So what do you do with that? Well, let's see if we can move this and show you okay so you want to have a medium roast coffee you've got light medium and uh, dark roast coffee here's the thing with dark roast now first of all for the coffee bean there really only are two kinds in the world 
There's a robusto, which is just nasty. It grows on the big trees. And then you've got Arabica beans. No matter where in the world, whether it's Indonesian, Java coffee, Colombian coffee, it's all the same coffee bean. And here we have the coffee bean. And you see that kind of a light chocolate color here. Hopefully you can see that. That's a medium roast. Now if this were almost black, that's a dark roast. Now why don't I like dark roast? Why do they roast at all? Well, you get kind of a pale, almost white color to this bean, which really isn't a bean, it's a pit. The, the coffee plant is a cherry, and inside you have this pit. But after you dry it and go through the process, you have to develop the flavor. That's what gives you the variations of coffee flavors. And part of developing that flavor, aside from the production process itself, is the roasting. And roasting is key. Just like when you take a steak and you cook it, you're going to cook it so that you get a little char on the outside of it, or a sear, or charcoal. You're developing those flavors that are not inside the meat itself. And it's a combination of the outside and the inside that makes it oh so delicious. Well, with a coffee bean, you have to develop these flavors also. And that's done by roasting. And the problem for me, now I'm not putting myself out as a coffee expert, understand that. I've interviewed the coffee experts. But for me, what develops that flavor works great up until you get to the dark roast when you take all of these amazing coffee beans that are all the same but they all have flavor differences depending on the altitude where they're grown, the soil they're grown in, that's what makes the differences and so you take that and basically you kill it and all coffee beans start tasting the same they just taste it's it's overcooked it's it's just burnt it's charred to my taste but when you have a light to a medium roast you're really developing the flavors without getting that uh, without going too far and that's when these coffee beans really become unique unto themselves. Okay, so here's a French press. What you have is you grind the bean and you grind it to about a medium to coarse grind. And you put that in to the bottom of the French press. Now the ratio of coffee to water is going to be about one part coffee to about 17 parts water more or less you can play with that that's pretty much where I've come down and so for me I know where it is on this press I had to make coffee four or five times in this particular one I bought here in Colombia for this was like five dollars or four dollars or something I had to uh, figure out where this particular one was now the one that I used in Ecuador, I, w I went through the same process. So now I know where the water goes. It doesn't have to be exact, it's going to be good. I take my simmered water, I pour it in, and right there, and now it sets. Now the experts will tell you all kinds of different things. It seems that most of them will tell you about four minutes. Some will tell you as long as five minutes. Some will say two minutes. Two to five minutes is really the range of the advice that you get. So what is it really? Well, it really depends on your taste. Some will say, go ahead and stir this. Well, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, you can shake it around a little bit. One of the concerns with French press is you get some of that silt, and so instead of being crystal clear, you get a little silt to it. Well, there's truth to that. On the other hand, that silt comes with flavor, and it gives the coffee a little body to it. So it doesn't seem like you're drinking just water. I prefer that. Now, 
when you're drinking you don't notice it it's not like there's chunks like here you're gonna see you know some of that coffee but when you put this plunger in and you move this down and it scrapes it all off the wall and puts it right back down into the coffee now the way I do mine is about a third is hot hot milk and two-thirds is the coffee now they tell you the experts will say preheat this preheat your cup all of that I've done all that and I'll be honest with you a lot of things that they say to do I can't tell the difference and I'm picky I'm pretty finicky so personally I don't think it makes that much difference if any difference at all I don't notice the difference having all the time in the world and having tried those things if it made a difference then I would continue doing it but what happens is I watch all these experts talk about how to do it and when I find that you know what they say it's just they're kind of repeating others but I don't notice the difference to hell with it I don't I don't need to do that if it's not improving why do extra steps although I don't mind doing it but if there's no payoff if there's no benefit to that I'm not going to bother and so we're now about two and a half three minutes for me it's fine if I wait too long if I go four or five minutes uh, the coffee can start to take a a little turn off of flavor town you know it might get a little bitter I, it, it's not as good to me so if if I'm going to air I'm going to do it on the shorter time rather than the longer time and so now I've got the coffee I'm going to pour that in I've got enough room left for my hot milk. Last thing is on the beans. I, it's critical to find good coffee. If you're in Ecuador, you can find good medium roast. You have to look for it. Nucatella, I highly recommend if you're in Cuenca. They've actually started to export, so hopefully you'll keep getting the, the good stuff. But they have a, a couple very popular cafes in Cuenca, so I don't think that'll change. And if you're in Colombia, oh my God, I mean, this is the center of the world for good coffee. Yeah, you can get some coffee, it's not so great, but there are places here that for generations have perfected their coffee growing and preparation. Um, one of my favorites is called Sorrento. It's a medium roast, it's a very mild coffee, but it you hear them people talk about coffee like it was wine you hear things like there's hints and tones of vanilla of chocolate of citrus and all of this well on some of these coffees even I can pick those things out this is kind of a chocolatey uh, coffee and this is from Condillo Sorrento is an excellent coffee I don't know if you can get it outside of this region I don't know if it's for export but Cafe Candillo you can get. Juan Valdez is an excellent coffee. I prefer Cafe Candillo for the bulk commercialized coffee. And for the boutique coffee, some of the Cafe Candillos and um, a Sorrento is an amazing coffee. So that's it. That's all I got to say on coffee. It seemed like I was saying a lot. I'm going to heat up my milk and finish off my cup. Till next time.